Welcome ladies and gentlemen and thank you very much for supporting our channel and of course here in Nairobi weather is a bit gloomy where are you watching us from today the 21st of April Azimilo Umoja have held their first uh, council meeting at KCC chaired by President Uhuru Kenyatta who is the Azimio chairman and with Raila Odinga as the party leader and all the other members are just council members. That meeting was held at KCC from 8, 9 to around um, 11.30, to around 11, yes, because they held a press briefing later. Um, it was well attended by all the council members um, uh, Kalonzo Msioka, Raila Dinga, President Uhuru Kenyatta, um, Rafael Tuju, who is the executive director of Azimio, Junet Muhammad, Chari Tingilu, Sabina Chege, uh, Mata Karua, Naomi Shaban, I think there is also Abdi Nur Hassan, yes. So all the council members attended. And uh, after that, they came out and gave a press briefing and that press briefing was read by Junet Mohammed, who is the Secretary General of Azimula Umoja, One Kenya Party. And of course, as a Secretary General, he is the spokesperson of that meeting, um, of the party. So what is happening is, this meeting is happening, uh, let's put it in some uh, prefix, uh, in some premise, because... Raila Dinga is supposed to fly out of the country to, I think, later on this evening with Mata Karua and the team. And I mentioned in my previous analysis that Raila, the trailer should not fly at least before the issue of the running mate is fully addressed. And yes, this meeting was beaten to try to do some panel beating around this. Secondly, the IBC had given the political, the, uh, poli uh, the, the presidential contenders uh, ultimatum to give their running mates. And of course, this is something that was there. So I want to believe that this meeting was also basically on that. And after that, they came out and gave a press briefing that was read uh, by Jeanette Mohammed. I want us to listen to that press briefing. Then after that, I will actually a divide on why exactly the Azimula Umoja team, what was the objective of that meeting? Listen to the press briefing here. Stable post-election economic environment and a united, inclusive, fair and prosperous nation. The council further resolved, further one mandated the National Coalition Executive Committee to immediately recommend suitable qualified individuals to be appointed to the following party organs. A. Coalition Election Board B. Coalition Elections Appeal Board C. National Disciplinary Committee D. Dispute Resolution Panel The Council also resolved to appoint an advisory panel to recommend to the presidential candidate, suitable candidates for nomination as the deputy presidential candidate. Three, directed the National Coalition Executive Committee to immediately prepare a campaign strategy and plan that will ensure, one, the Azimio Laumoja one Kenya presidential candidate wins the 2022 presidential election. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are watching this video and you have not yet subscribed, kindly take a second and subscribe and also click the notification bell so that when we publish our videos, you will be receiving notifications. And I also want to ask you, if you are staying within Nairobi and its environments, that is, are you staying within Nairobi, the Lovington, Runda, um, and these other areas, Kiambu, uh, Kitagela, and you experience frequent blackouts what you need to do 
is to find yourself a power backup system. Now, Instalite is the best to offer this. Now, check out this poster here. They have amazing offers ranging all the way from 125,000 to 195,000 and way even to 500,000 depending on the capacity of what you want. Remember, they supply, they, they install these backup systems in residential houses, um, in homes, in um, business uh, premises like the schools and institution and so on. So check out and you can also contact them through, through their number 0722818883. And check out, reach, check out the poster and you will actually understand more about it and make sure you make it clear that you've received this from Kevin Oduor. Why do you think uh, that meeting was done? Um, according to the press briefing, they have mentioned about Azimio Elections Board, uh, Azimio Dispute Resolution Board. Uh, they have also mentioned about, they have mentioned other things, Azimio Dispute Resolution Elections Board and um, Advisory Council to Railo Dinga on the presidential running mate. All the others were for cosmetics. But the gist of that meeting was on the issue of the running mate. So this is what I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. Raila Dinga and President Uhuru Kenyatta, it is only the two gentlemen that have a shortlist or they have already decided who is going to be Raila's running mate. If IBC makes the call and says that we need to give us running mate by tomorrow, I can assuredly tell you that Raila will produce his running mate. But what is happening, the aim of that meeting, number one, was to manage expectations. Expectations and emotions. Um, I am not surprised by the way people are reacting um, on, on, on both sides. It's not just an Azimia affair, but even, even in Kenya Kwanzaa where people, the way people are reacting to this running mate position. And in fact, it is something that um, it's a positive to Azimio uh, factors because, uh, to the Azimio faction, because when people are jostling for that position, that means that people are so optimistic on them winning the presidency. Unlike, the other, uh, unlike in Kenya Kwanzaa, where we understand that no one is coming out like I wanted. No one is saying, no, give me, I want it. No one is saying that. But this other side, the people that want it, uh, like Kalonzo Museka is out saying, I want it. So what this meeting was to do was to manage those expectations. Control, uh, at least take the emotions down. The truth of the matter, they already have what, they already know what they want to do. But you need to make sure that you accommodate everyone. And so meeting Kalonzo, telling Kalonzo that, you know, we need to do this, we are going to do that other one, we are putting these structures. In the event, like now, we know that there is a, a firm, British firm, that is doing opinion poll on probable candidates. Then they, they did it very uh, critical. Riley is stepping away of the country for the next five days. He will be back on 29th. But then they're putting an advisory council to decide on who is going to be Raila's running mate. So probably when Raila comes back, this council are going just to be, it's just going to stamp, they're just going to approve what the other two gentlemen have done. I, I also know that this meeting was also critical for the optics, for the unity optics. They needed to get a photo of Raila, Kalonzo and Uhuru and the team together so that it doesn't, this will be the, the next uh, newspaper headline tomorrow. It's for the image building of the coalition. So the image building of the coalition, because what, what people had perceived in the recent two weeks is that it was in a house that is crumbling down because of different factions fighting. Uh, remember the series of press briefings between Kalonzo Musioka and the Alfred Mutua team and Raila meeting another, the fourth leg of the Azimio. So there have been that perception of divisions that are really emerging within Azimio. So that meeting was also to bring in, to show that unity, so that when Raila is, actually Raila is away, but again, 
the newspaper headlines tomorrow will run with a very good story on the unity among India's meal amidst all these challenges that there. Um, I, I also feel uh, there is also there was also a need eh, to ventilate the coalition on excessive media pilferage. Now I think um, because of these competitive interests, the media had really um, uh, penetrated the Azimio boat. And this is something that was worrying because I, I was wondering how someone would call a press briefing and talk on behalf of a coalition. If Weber, for example, if Weber party will call a press briefing, they will talk Weber issues and when a journalist asks them about anything as meal, they give their position on as a meal. So what this meeting was also to do is to lay down those structures. The last press briefing that Azmio held was two weeks ago uh, by uh, um, the executive director of Azmio, Rafael Tuju. Then after that, they have not been doing, even no one has been doing, but then there are some people, uh, the wipe, especially the wiper faction, when they are talking, like Ntula Kilonzo, Dan Manzo, you know, they've been talking so much about the Azmio, and I think people are getting uncomfortable because they should talk talk on behalf of the wiper party, but then it should not be in the prefix of Azimio. So that was really, there was a need for them to do that. Because Rwela is stepping away, um, you cannot underestimate the fact that things need to move on. So that meeting is also, to, that was also going to uh, try to activate uh, different structures within the Azimio. Uh, there was that, uh, there was the group that was, uh, the Sky group that was led by Joho and the team, but Joho I think is, is still in the Ramadan. But there is now, because Raila is away, they now need to activate the uh, other interest groups, the women leagues, the youth league, um, the lobby groups that are now within Azimio. I think this meeting was also critical to see how the Azimio campaigns can still have a momentum even as Raila is away. A bit of that momentum, even though I listened to that press briefing, it was also coming up with a strategy on how Azimio are going to campaign. Um, then lastly, the Azimio team are addressing something I talked about in this channel. I think I talked about it yesterday, that in my previous video, that they did not have a good strategy to win elective seats. They were so much concentrated on the presidency that they were leaving the sibling rivalry within the coalition parties. So that is why that elections, uh, Azimio's NEB has been addressed, has been formed, and I think dispute resolution mechanism has been put up so that they try to manage uh, this sibling rivalry between the parties between WIPA, ODM, Jubilee, DAPK and that. Remember it was coming at a time after Raila was, um, just just two days ago, Raila was, came under sharp criticism of the six-piece calling for voting in Nyanza. But then he clarified and said, in ODM strongholds, let's do six-piece. I, I, I understand that uh, uh, David Murade was protesting, but I think Raila was, Raila was right in this, because even in, 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 in central Kenya, the Jubilee will call for six piece because they are going to fight against, uh, uh, they, they, are, they, are, they are fighting against UDA. There is no way they are now going to say vote for our governor, but don't vote for my, our MCA. This is something that is really realistic, especially on ODM strongholds, specifically Nyanza and bit of the coast. So, in some sections of Western and to be specific, Busia. So this meeting was addressing a very critical point that the team did not had not been giving attention. The need to end the sibling rivalry. And for example, one of the issues that is bringing Telmet in the Nairobi governor race is sibling rivalry. This competitive interest within the party. ODM party has a most formidable candidate for the governor and cannot be addressed, cannot be given because they're being given presidency. The wiper doesn't want to be left up, uh, out and Ngati and Kaloki have been kicked out. So I think this coalition, uh, th this strategy is also to help this team to maximize and win elective seats, both in the National Assembly, the Senate and the County Assembly. Ladies and gentlemen, 
that's my analysis on that and you can also add into this list some of the few issues that you think uh, that this Azimio Castle uh, gave keen interest.